message and present uh, this short video clip of Minnesota and that, I don't know what it's called, the Great Mall of America. And it shows, it's probably about 10 minutes long of this guy walking through that mall, this huge mall. And what do you think it revealed? It revealed black people, dark races, mostly Muslim, walking around in their Muslim dress, talking and, and speaking in the Muslim language. For 10 minutes, you're, you didn't see, but maybe three white people walking quickly by because, you know, they look, had kind of a freaked out look on their face because they were being surrounded by and there were hundreds and hundreds everywhere of these dark races and Muslims filled, filling this mall. And I watched that. I haven't been there. I haven't seen that until this video was shown to me. And I was appalled and shocked at that. And 
quite frankly, it's been a long time since I've been in any mall, but I remember when I went to the mall years ago, and I didn't see anything like that. I think it was in Spokane that I went to a mall, and we had to, uh, um, in fact, it was back before our son Mike, well, our son Michael was still alive, and uh, he had to go to mall to get something, and we went with him, and it was a fairly ple- pleasant experience, and most of the people were white. But it wasn't so in this mall. And I looked at that and I said, is this what is coming? It's not coming. It's, it has come to America. We are being invaded. And I don't need, I know you're the choir, and I'm speaking to the choir in many cases, but some of you, again, like I said last week, this may be the first time you've heard this or thought about it, and hopefully I'll be able to show you on video what I've been talking to you about on this mall. You will be shocked. You will be appalled. Well, you know, in a lot of the verses we've read so far, again, who's doing this to us? God Almighty is doing it. He's bringing this... Um, he, his anger... And wrath is being poured out. When I look at things like that, I see his anger and his wrath being poured out upon this nation. Or the dark races and all these other races and the aliens being brought into this nation, are they a blessing or are they a curse? Oh, we can't think. We're, we're supposed to love everybody, Pastor. How dare you say that? That is so unloving, so unkind. Well, listen, is it biblical? I'm going to bring out some more verses to you. We're just starting this here. But is it biblical? Let's think about what the Word of God is warning us. We, let's quit thinking emotionally about this situation and what's happening. What must happen? You know what must happen? Just what God's Word says. There must be a separation. The Bible advocates racial separation. We must return to being a Bible-oriented nation, a nation under God and His divine theocratic government, instituted under the terms of biblical instruction. Again, the dark races, their history, their culture, their historical pattern have never been advocates of biblical Christianity. They have been stewards of mysticism, spiritism, voodoo, just like we were talking about last week, Ben, in Haiti and what's going on there. And that is still going on. Hinduism, Buddhism, and all manner of the ways of darkness and superstition. God Almighty never called them to be His covenant people, the dark races, the pre-Adamic races. Only the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are under biblical covenant. Multiculturalism will never be a blessing to this nation. America immersed itself in multiculturalism. When it does this, it will only continue to be what? Cursed. You know, I'm not getting any amens out of people on that, but I'm telling you the truth. And I'd rather hear the truth than a lie. I'd rather hear from a minister that's willing to tell the truth from God's Word and I... I don't care if I was the only one in the in the uh, congregation. I'd be happy. I'll be. That's what where I want to be because I want to hear biblical truth. I want to be pleasing unto the Lord and and learn His uh, truth. So I'm going to say it one more time: the dark races races do not and never have brought kingdom, light, or 
truth. They never came to America or Canada or Europe or South Africa or Australia or any other white nation or land in the name or purposes of Jesus Christ. They never came to establish Bible law or set up a Christian government. How did they come? They came as takers, always as takers, and were deeply rooted in racial justification, rationalization for themselves. God's word tells Israel over and over again to be separate from those who are not of their kind or kindred. I want you to turn in your Bibles now to Judges chapter 3 and verse 5. Judges 3 and verse 5. Look at all the race mixing that's going on in America today that's being tolerated, and you can't dare speak out against it. And this is happening in all the nations of regathered Israel. Race mixing, Sodom and, the Sodom and Gomorrah, the homosexual lifestyle. You can't speak out against it. You can't go to school and talk against transgenderism and any of that other stuff because your kids are being exposed to that and the teacher or whoever is reading those types of books and supporting that type of material to your children in schools. It's horrible what's going on today. It's blasphemous. And race mixing again. It is a plague upon the nation. Again, let's read here in Judges chapter 3 and verse 5. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the, High, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebusites. They were encircled around them. Wish they were just circled around us today. They're right here in our nation, walking among us, and you could see it in their attitude and their and the way that they look and the way that they speak and the way that they talk to you and address you. You know, I've been to places in the south and in the east that has just shocked me to death when I'll when I've had to address these dark races. And just I'm I'm polite, I'm kind, I'm considerate, I'm going up there and making an order or something like that. And the attitude that I get back from them and the hate that comes back and the way they, they look at you. But no, they are not, they're not racist. You can't talk to them or think of them as you are racist. And you know why again, Whitey? Because you're white. And your ancestors have a history of racism. Well, our history, truth comes, is brought out, has a history of blessing you black and dark races. You were blessed, believe it or not, by being brought over here as slaves. You, are, you should get on your knees and thank God you were, your ancestors were brought over here as slaves and brought out of that hellhole in Africa where they were killing you. Your own people were killing you. Your own people were trapping you. Your own people were selling you as slaves. And there's more to that. You want to hear more of the truth? I don't think a lot of you can handle it. But most of you are waking up today to this truth. Verse 6. And they took their daughters. By the way, I'm sorry if I'm slurring. I'm still trying to recover. And so some of the, my words may be slurred a little. Just bear with me. Love me anyway, I pray. And they took their daughters to be their wives. Of who? These people who were not of their kind, which God Almighty told them to stay away from, and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. They didn't just give their daughters and their sons to these people to be interracially mixed with them. They worshiped their gods. Again, oh, pastor, was that happening? Just Didn't that just... That's gone. No, it's happening. I would say more so today than back then. 
And the children of Israel, it goes on to say, did evil in the sight of the Lord and forget the Lord their God, this Yahweh, and serve Balaam and the groves. The children of Israel did what evil? Well, they worshiped other gods. They, they're trying to show how loving and tolerant they are, aren't they? Well, aren't they doing that today? You can't even speak out against much less Zionism. You cannot really speak out against uh, Talmudism. You cannot speak against Judaism. You can't call them, even though we do and I do, um, Antichrist. You can't speak out against Muslims. You can't even, were our fathers even 40 and 50 years ago, would have openly spoke out against the Hindu religion. <clears throat> and the horrible things about that religion. Would you like to live like a lot of these cities in India? Would you like the Mississippi River to be like the Ganges River where feces is flowing freely and your children are, are swimming in it? And having all these idols around the nation like they have all over their nation. There's thousands of different gods that they worship. And Buddhism... And of course, what's the other thing that is happening? Not only are we tolerating and blessing them by bringing their religions and opening our doors to all these re different religions and paganism as God Almighty says, don't do it. You're my people. I made a covenant with you. Well, what are they doing? They're also giving their sons and daughters. They're giving their sons and daughters. You know, I've seen this happening among Israel believers. I'll just say that. Our people, on a number of occasions, and they've said, well, what can we do? You know, I've got to keep peace in the family. You know, I, you know, and, and uh, well, they're Christian, you know. They're black, but, or they're Hindu, or they're uh, some dark co color, mixed race, or whatever. And, but they love Jesus, Pastor. You know, we just, ha we just have to, you know, go along today if we're going to keep peace in the family. Is that what God's Word says to do? Or does God's Word say, no, and we shouldn't tolerate it? Again, this is happening today right before our very eyes. And our children are adopting the ways of the heathen and becoming more and more paganized. I have some in my family that won't even talk to me because they don't want to hear this. They don't want, you know, the world's not that bad, Dad, they will say, or um, Grandpa. Really? Okay. You know, they talk to you as though, you know, pet, dad or grandpa, we know this is coming out of your mind. Really? Is this coming out of my mind or my thoughts? Third Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. <clears throat> and I don't want you to forget the fact that I have done four other sermons on this. Go back and listen to those on a case for racial Israel. Listen to them. There are many Bible verses on this. Ezra 9, verse 1. Now when these things were done, the princess came to me saying, these rulers of Israel, 
the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. Well, go figure. Again, this is what's being done today by what would you do, Christian ministers? I don't think of your Hagee and any of them. What would they do? They, well, they would just, they would keep these trips going to Israel. We want to bless the Jews, and you're going to be so blessed, by the way, coming on our cruise over to see the Jews. Now, I know a lot of you going over the over there, and I'm not necessarily pointing my finger at you, but look, what would these ministers, Judeo-Christian ministers, what would they do? They have not separated themselves from the people of these lands, doing according to their abominations and promoting them and promoting their causes and blessing the Jews. And, you know, God's Word says we're supposed to bless the Jews. No, it doesn't say that. It never says we are to bless the Jews or we are... I don't even care if they were God's chosen people. God says, you do what I tell you to do. Keep my commandments. Even of the Canaanites, it says, and the Hittites, these people that were around Israel, again, the Perizzites and the Jebusites. Why, you would think I was just reading what I just read to you earlier. No, these verses are repeated. These Bible principles are repeated to Israel over and over and over in the Scriptures. The Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Egyptians, and the Amorites. How dare anyone again say, oh, that, that, see, that just them. It left out all, you know, the uh, people in Africa, Pastor. You know, it, it left out the North Koreans. It left out this, so we're just free to do. Are you kidding me? you got to twist God's word that away? You know, if you're going to do that, folks, I'm serious. I don't want to go on any flights with you. I don't want to go on any big boats with you. I don't feel safe around you. I really don't, if that's your thinking. You know, when I lived in San Antonio uh, many years ago, uh, people kept moving further and further north to get away from the Mexicans. <gasps> oh, don't don't talk about don't 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 say that. No, nope. this is literally what happened, and you've seen it happen in many many cities. What were they doing? They were trying to separate themselves from all the crime, the drugs, the de the uh, deterioration that they saw happening among them. They were putting on bars. And more and more houses you drive by, once good neighborhoods, and you could see the graffiti, gangs and such. And to a large degree, white people do not want to live among the other races and cultures. They don't. It's like, what was that thing that I read to y'all a while back on? If the suburbs... If they could move white people out of the suburbs and move them into the inner cities and clean uh, the inner city, say downtown Chicago or Atlanta, it would become eventually clean, pleasant, nice neighborhoods. And what would happen to the suburbs where you move these city dwelling dark races out there? They would become a stench and deteriorated neighborhoods. Just telling the truth. Okay, let's keep reading here in Ezra 9, verse 2. For they have forsaken their, their for themselves, or they have taken of their daughters for themselves these other races and for their sons, so that the holy seed, who's that? Israel, the covenant people have mingled themselves with the people of those lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Would not all of our politicians and Judeo-Christian ministers go along with this and say how wonderful it is? Look at all the multiculturalism that's going on. 
What a blessing it is to our nation. When it's the exact opposite, it's a curse and a blight upon our nation. You know, speaking of politicians and Judeo-Christian ministers, many of them are married to aliens. Many of these politicians and Judeo-Christian ministers are married to aliens. I'll just mention a few of them. Mitch McConnell's uh, wife is Asian. Bill de Blasio, who is Jewish, is married to a black woman. Greg uh, Abbott, who is governor of Texas, is married to a woman of Mexican descent. And of course, and there's many of them, but I have to mention this. In 2018, Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, married Meghan Markle, who was a mixed ethnic heritage. And it was approved by the Queen. Whether she was, well, I, I think her arm was twisted in this. I don't care what, how you present it. They went along with it. One other, uh, Kamala Harris, who's running for the Democratic, to be Democrat president, she's married to a white man. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of these examples. My parents went to a Baptist church, and uh, his name was, I think, Richard Harris. It was Harris something. And... Uh, my wife and I, my mother bugged us to go to church one day, and we finally gave in and went. And I was kind of glad, in a sense, I went to hear this. The minister got up there and talked about his white daughter. I preached against interracial marriage, but God find, he literally said, God finally showed me the light that this is good, and this would be a blessing. So I gave my daughter my blessing and said, it's okay. Go ahead and marry this black man. And he participated in that ceremony. What? He performed that marriage ceremony and gave his blessing to what God Almighty has warned over and over in scriptures not to do? And you know what the Judeo-Christian people in his church did? They applauded it. They did it was great. Folks, race is important. God wants his people to remain racially pure and not become pagans. Over and over in the scripture, God tells Israel to separate themselves from those races who are not of their kind. How many times does God have to warn his people not to amalgamate themselves with the other races? How many times does he have to tell Israel race mixing is a sin? It's adultery. It's an adulterating and adulteration of your race before they'll listen and obey. Let's go to Nehemiah 10, verse 29. Nehemiah 10, verse 29. They clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's laws? What's this talking about? God says, if you'll obey me, in Deuteronomy 28 29 again, you'll be blessed. But if you don't, if you don't obey my commandments, if you're not a commandment-keeping, commandment-loving, commandment-teaching, commandment-believing people, curses will come upon you as a race and as a nation. And it says, and unto an oath to walk in God's laws, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, to obey and do all the commandments which the Lord thy God and his judgments and his statutes. And that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. You know, God told them, Israel, I want you to go in 
and take this land, and I want you to kill every one of them. <gasps> That's horrible. Where does it say that? It says it lots of different places in the Bible. Do some research. Look it up. It goes on even stronger than that. It uses stronger language what I'm just using right now. But if you don't, these people of the land are going to remain. They're going to uh, paganize you. And they're going to marry your sons and daughters. And they're going to corrupt them. These, what I'm reading here in these verses are biblical kingdom truths again. But the Judeo-Christian denomination churches do not teach what? Kingdom Israel truth. They do not teach it. What do they teach? They teach a Jewish kingdom message and glorify a vast array of doctrines of fables and politically correct, compliant, false traditions of men. That race mix mixing and miscegenation or adultery is now okay because they preach a perverted biblical grace. We're under grace, Pastor. All of you have heard this. And many of them today have become so liberal and pro-even sodomite that they are even preaching that a person can become a, quote, Christian sodomite as long as they accept Christ as their Savior. Folks, we need to turn back to God and His Word. We need to really start being a Bible-believing people. I've gone a long time with you this morning. Some of you may have turned off your DVD or however you're listening to this message this morning because, you know, uh, my grace ears can't handle this. I had some people lo I love. I was visiting with them not too long ago, and she said to me, and they're supposed to be Israel believing people. She said, the only important thing is it's not race anymore, I'm convinced. It's that we just love Jesus. But love Jesus, I said, in what way? How? Well, am I supposed to forget God's commandments? Is it just accept Christ as your Savior and be a good and agree with the politically correct Judeo-Christian junk that's going on and being taught today? What do you mean? All that's important is we got to love Jesus. Is that the truth? Or are we being lied to? Now, a lot of people believe that. They sincerely believe that. But are they right? Or No. I will say that they're sincerely wrong. Let's sincerely believe God, Lord Jesus Christ, and believe his word and be lovers of his truth and his covenant purposes unto Israel. Let's close there. Lord Jesus, I pray your blessing upon this message. I pray, I pray you will use it to help awaken your people to these important truths again, that they will come out from among this deception and this paganism and that they will stop supporting the destruction of this nation. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen.